You're watching Marsha, Marsha, Marsha on ViroBuzzTV.com. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so happy you're here, and I want you to know you are going to be extremely thrilled that you're here, too, because you're going to meet an author that has written several books, but oh, the one we're going to be talking about is absolutely wonderful, and we do want to let you know right now that my guest appeared at the Vero Beach Book Center for a book signing, so if you don't have this book, you need to go and you need to get it. Oh, boy, so great. So let me welcome Robert Curson, and Robert Curson is the author of Pirate Hunters. Wow, wonderful to see you. So nice to be here, thank you. Do you know, Robert, I had such a grand time watching the trailer of your recent book, and that, of course, after hearing from Holly, our gal here at uh, Buzz TV, saying that she loved your previous books mm. and was so excited about this. Let me ask you, if you were to say to our audience what the whole overall feeling of the books that you write about, what would it be? Well, there seems to be at the center and the heart of my books a character who's at a crossroads in life and has a, a choice to make. Um, the character can either make, and these are all true stories, by the uh -huh. way. I write oh, yes. all nonfiction. But the character's in a position where they could go one way or the other in life. And often they have a chance to go the safe way, a conservative way, um, where things will end up easy and safe for them. But they opt instead to do something more risky, more adventurous, uh, and more fulfilling for their lives. And that's really the theme. So that's the theme of all of your books? It seems to be, and I don't necessarily set out to find those kind of stories, but I'm drawn to them. Well, I was going to say, because having seen the trailer for Pirate Hunters, that's exactly what happens. And when you talk about this individual, and then, of course, it's, it's so great, because you also have interviewed two, and I guess your previous book was written about this particular treasure hunter, mm -hmm. uh, that when you got that call saying, do you like pirates? That was what really created you to go into this particular book called Pirate Hunters. But I want to just talk to you a little bit about this particular book, Pirate Hunters, because this individual, Joseph Bannister, and he was British, he was an English nobleman, mm -hmm. and he did what you have just said. He chose to do something that apparently is horrendous in the world of switching Gears. Yes. So let's talk about that. Well, Joseph Bannister in the 1680s was, as you say, a, an English nobleman. He was the captain of a ship called the Golden Fleece, a hundred foot long, beautiful sailing merchant ship. And he was entrusted by wealthy ship owners to um, move cargoes between London and Port Royal, Jamaica. He himself was headed for his own soft landing in life. He was accomplished and respected, revered. And then one day, for reasons history has no idea about, he turned rogue, stole his own ship, the Golden Fleece, and turned pirate, went on a pirating rampage. And uh, it's something that history can never quite figure out because the guy had it all. And he chose a profession in the 1680s which was the most dangerous in the world. If you were caught as a pirate then, you were going to hang. Oh boy, and this is what you get when you, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps once again. I seem to always have guests on here that give me goosebumps, but it does seem to me that when you just read a little touch of this, you absolutely want to become a treasure hunter. You want to go out there and find this, and really some of the magnificent descriptions that you have, what an author you are. We're going to take a little break right now, just break for about 60 seconds and come back and tell you a little bit more. We're going to tease you about pirate hunters and, of course, also about Finding that spot, because I loved it when one of your interviews, the, the gentleman said, who was a professional diver, said, X doesn't always mark the spot. It simply marks the area when you're looking for the Golden Fleece. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage. But you can pay too much. But at ICANN, we work for you. We shop all the private and government plans available, dozens of plans, to find the plan that best suits you and your family's needs at historically low prices. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. It takes the mystery out of comparison price shopping for prescription medicine, giving you the power to instantly find the pharmacy with the lowest price and save possibly hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single year. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Please call 800-345-7585.
Well, welcome back, everyone. We're continuing our discussion with Robert Curson. He is the author of his latest book called Pirate Hunters. And I can say that going back and seeing the other books that you've written, you have a little love for maybe deep sea treasure hunting? Yes, definitely. I love the sea because um, the limits are boundless. Yes. Um, we're more is known about the surface of the moon than the bottom of the ocean. So there's such opportunity for exploration and for discovery in the oceans. It never ends. Oh, absolutely. And now I know you're from Illinois, mm -hmm. right? You have to know that you're right here on the Treasure Coast in yes. Indian River County. Absolutely. Have you ever done any research on some of the treasures that are right offshore here? I have. You know, when I would research this book, Pirate Hunters, I came in touch with some legendary treasure hunters, including Carl Fismer, who's one of the greats. Oh, yes. And he and others, Bob Marks, Tracy Bowden, explained to me the rich history here. And when you come here, you really feel yourself to be in Treasure Central. Uh, there's nothing like this in Chicago, where I'm from. But here, it seems like there's treasure everywhere. Do you know, I have to tell you, I'm so delighted that you used the name Bob Marks. He is a dear, dear friend of mine, having been born in Melbourne. Of course, that's where Bob lives. And I thought he is going to be so angry at me that I'm interviewing you <laughs> and not him. But we're going to get him on here, too, because he is he's a treasure diver. And he's a, an adventurer. Yes. And he has explained to me how fascinating this is. But I want you to just kind of start us off, and then we're going to take a little break and come back and continue. I would love to have you talk a little bit more about this Mr. Joseph Bannister. Give me kind of an insight. I know he's an English nobleman, but how would you describe him, and why do we think he turned coat and became a pirate? Well, nobody knows for sure, but the um, two divers in my story began to realize if they were going to ever find his ship, and a Golden Age pirate ship is the rarest thing you could find in the world, yeah. maybe you know anywhere. Uh, if they were going to find his ship, they were going to have to find him first, get into his mind, and even more important, his heart. And so they started to formulate theories about why he might do it, and much of it came down to the idea of democracy. Pirate oh. ships were the first democracies a hundred years before that concept took hold in this country. Pirates were taking votes on everything. Everyone was equal. The lowliest deckhand got the same vote and the same privileges and the same meals as the captain himself. And that idea, at least in the minds of my subjects, may have been what took Bannister from the safety and honor of a merchant sea captainship to wow. pirate. You know what this is doing? It's just making me want to read not only about what is beneath the sea out there, but history, because this particular English nobleman who stole his own ship and then became a pirate, that was back in the 1600s, is that right? right? That's right. And you were, as I said, you were going to hang if you did that. Yeah. But the opportunities, not just for treasure and riches, but for camaraderie among your men, everybody in equal, everybody voting where to go, what to steal, who to kick off the ship, who to welcome on, was thrilling. And that might be behind what Bannister did. Oh, my golly. You get into the mind of this particular individual, and then, of course, the story is, you would call this a true story. It's yes. not fiction. No, it's true. It's a true story. And when we talk about the Golden Fleece, and was that the name of the ship? Right. It was a merchant ship. Okay. And Bannister stole the ship he was in command of, took it over, and went on a pirating rampage, uh, quite <gasps> unlike any history had seen before. And let me tell you something, you're going to want the book, but you're going to also want to see that trailer because when you talk about and you feel what these other professional divers have felt and what it is to come up with something and then you know that it is a yes. golden age pirate ship, wow, and you see the visuals. We'll be back in 60 seconds, so don't go away. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all. From color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. See Arts in Depth with Barbara Hoffman, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 and 10 p.m. And we are glad you're back. You're going to be just as happy because we are continuing our talk and just kind of wrapping up our discussion with author Robert Kirkson. And I want to say that right. It's Kirkson. And, of course, he has written this absolutely fantastic book called Pirate Hunters. And your previous book was 
called Shadow Divers. Shadow Divers. Yes. And you have been writing, but really loving this idea of someone changing, really shifting gears in the middle of their life. Yes, that's very important to me because I think all of us in life can get comfortable mm -hmm. and settle into a routine that, uh, while safe and, and um, conservative, might not be the most um, fulfilling or the most rich experience. And so I always admire people who uh, take a risk oh, and who yes. go a separate direction in the name of a bigger and richer life. Well, and this particular lead in this particular story, pirate hunters definitely took a risk because, as you say, they were known to have been hung if yes. they hanged, I think it is, if they did something like steal their own ship. Right. And that's what really grabbed me. Uh, Joseph Bannister, by turning pirate, risked everything. Yeah. And he, w he really had it made in life. And the two guys I write about, um, John Chatterton and John Matera, also had it made in many ways in life and stood to lose a great deal by uh, risking all that and spending all their money and taking all their time and moving to the Dominican Republic to go looking for this pirate ship. Ah. So there are parallels between the two modern guys I write about and the pirate himself who went on this pirating rampage. Now, I know you don't have the book in your hand. Maybe you do, because of course, when this is airing, maybe you've been to that wonderful signing at our Vera Beach Book Center, and you may have that book in your hand, but if you don't, go and see the trailer, because just to hear your two professional divers talk about and show some and what it meant to them to go beneath the sea and find something, and just by looking at the beads or the the little glass that he, they had, yes. I mean, that was so exciting. They knew that it was something absolutely wonderful. It was stunning, and there was such a human element to the artifacts they pulled off, the discovery they made. There's even a cereal bowl, a pirate cereal bowl that still has Ooh, porridge yes. inside, a, yeah. man, a pirate's last meal as they did battle with the Royal Navy. I looked at that. Yes. I couldn't believe that. I mean, and it was down. That was what they found. And what were the little teeny, be oh no, I know what it was. It was one of the big, uh, the cannon, the ball, that they, that's when they knew right. that it was a pirate ship. Yeah. Proving something is a pirate ship is completely separate challenge from finding it. It's even more difficult. So even if you dared to stumble across a pirate ship and had the audacity to suggest it was a pirate ship, proving it conclusively is almost impossible. And yet that's what these guys set out to do in the book. Oh, boy. Have you ever been treasure diving? Not diving, but I've gone with them and oh. watched them look for things. In fact, I was taken uh, on an island where the pirate ship was thought to have sunk and we looked with metal detectors, and uh -huh. I myself pulled up a genuine cannonball from the battle between the pirates and the Royal Navy, one of the greatest thrills of my life. What did you feel like? I was oh, say. I can never tell you. It was finding true treasure in history, and I did it myself. Yeah. It was an, a feeling unlike I'd had ever, ever in the world. Do you know what's really exciting about all of this is that, of course, our very important guest, Robert Curson, who is the author of this absolutely wonderful, wonderful book called Pirate Hunters, and of course your previous books in the past as well. But I have to tell you, the correlation here of knowing that we have the fleet of the 1715 right off the shore here, we're gonna be celebrating so much of that, and the fact that you are a good friend of Bob Marks is another yes. good thing, I gotta say that or he'll absolutely. never speak to me again. But it is so wonderful to have you here uh, anything in the offing? We have about 30 seconds after Pirates Hunters. Well, I'm always on the on the hunt for something new. In, in that way, I'm much like a treasure hunter myself. Oh, terrific. Well, everybody, you must go to the Vera Beach Book Center and, of course, look up this book, Treasure Hunters, by our guest, who has been just so dynamite talking to us about what it feels like when you find and you know that treasure is there and what it takes. That book is going to, you're going to be mesmerized, I'm going to say. So, Robert Curson, thanks so very, very much Thank for Thank you. It's a real us. privilege to be here. Thank Terrific you. Terrific to have you here. See you at the Vera Beach Book Center. See you next time. Since 1951, Globe Life and Accident Insurance Company has been providing families with life insurance protection. One dollar covers the first month of coverage, whether you choose from $5,000 up to $100,000 of coverage. First day coverage means no waiting periods. Easy to buy, no medical exam, no risk 30-day money-back guarantee. Up to $150,000 of accidental death coverage can be added to your policy. Globe Life makes buying life insurance easy. Watch Chamber Buzz at 6 and 10 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays on HeroBuzzTV.com.
hello everybody and welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about something that I think is just so fantastic here in our community and who's going to be telling us about it is Patty Oliver and of course we go back a long way Patty. It's wonderful to see you again. Great to see you You too. are what we call a HOPE coordinator. Yes ma'am. And of course we have Caitlin Brown here who has been through that HOPE program as well. But if you will Pan, good to see you as well. Mm -hmm. Patty, give our viewers, if you will, kind of a, a very short synopsis of the mission of this project. Well, HOPE stands for Harvest Outreach Preparation for Employment, and what we do is invite anybody who would like to improve their workforce skills or who is in really in need of a job to come and do uh, 120 hours of educational time and 180 hours of on-the-job training. Oh and the mission is that if someone is unemployed or having difficulty, as you know, times are tough, getting a job, then um, we give them the tools to go out and, and you know be better prepared to obtain a job. That whole mission statement is so dynamite and very particularly in this day and time. Let me ask you, Caitlin, though, what led you to that program? What, what were your needs at the, pro, at the point? When I first came into Harvest, I was looking for food. I came just as a normal pantry you know, looking mm -hmm. for a bag of free food. I was on the brink of being homeless. I had nothing to eat. And when I stepped in there, um, you know, I just said I needed food. What can you guys give me? And um, one of the other employees there, her name is Susan, she had me sit down and she explained to me about the HOPE program and it was just starting and that I was going to be able to improve my life. And she said, you know, do you want to stay stuck where you're at or do you want to improve? And I uh. said, I would like a chance to improve you know I don't know what I can do and she said just start showing up oh my mm -hmm. golly oh, this is this is what we need in this world mm -hmm. absolutely and I think you have spoken it so beautifully too Caitlin because so many times we think of these gimme 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 programs that are out there but this is not just a, a hand out it's a hand up as we say so frequently really helping you to come up and get out of the doldrums and really work there and see. So what about, how long have you been with this particular entity, Patty? I've been there just about a year and a half mm -hmm. and we do eight week cycles of hope. So we're currently in our seventh cycle. Oh boy, oh wow. So now I'm, when we're gonna take a little break in just a little bit and when we come back, I do wanna go into a, a little more of the procedure for you if you are watching and that how you can be a part of this. And I guess really, what, because you were with another, the other group that was really kind of uh, coordinating all of this, weren't you, before you came with HOPE? Well, I was with Henkels and McCoy mm -hmm. Youth Connections, uh, okay. a separate, separate entity. Um, and you said the same thing when you saw how great it was. I fell in love with Harvest and the mission, as you said. Um, we are all about a hand up and not a hand out. And what we do is we inspire, we empower, um, we help lift people out of um, poverty and bad sure. crisis situations. And you know, it, how wonderful is it to see somebody be able to, oh. to be self-sustaining, you know? And to see Caitlin, to see this is proof of the pudding, so to speak. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase, <laughs> phrase but, but it, just, it just shows what can happen and that there is hope out there. And that's what it's all about. We all think of that Harvest Food Outreach Program but this is that extended program that is so vital. We're going to take that little break right now and then come back and continue our talk about it. And really, who, who is really the profile of someone who can really utilize this service? Someone like Caitlin, for instance, who has really made strides. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage. But you can pay too much. But at ICANN, we work for you. We shop all the private and government plans available, dozens of plans, to find the plan that best suits you and your family's needs at historically low prices. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. It takes the mystery out of comparison price shopping for prescription medicine, giving you the power to instantly find the pharmacy with the lowest price and save possibly hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single year. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. 
please call 800-345-7585. Well, welcome back, everyone. We are continuing our discussion with Patty Oliver. She is a HOPE coordinator with HOPE, and I love that. It's Harvest Outreach Preparation for Employment. There you go, and that's exactly <laughs> what it means because it is preparation for employment, and there are job opportunities out there, but really to be trained is so vitally important. So I want to go back just a little bit and, talk, if you will, both of you kind of join in. The profile of the person who's out there right now that is saying to themselves, I just need food, just like Caitlin did. I mean, what was it feeling like when you just needed food? You didn't know where the next meal was going to come from. Um, it was a very discouraging feeling because, you know, I did want to improve. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And everywhere that I went to, you know, if I did ask for help, they'd be like, well, we just have this. Here's the bag of food. You know, if you need yeah. to take a shower, go here. And it, there was never, I didn't see any hope, you know, and so being in that class gave me self-confidence to sure. want to try harder. Do you know what I've often wanted, and we won't do it now, but someday, and I'm going to talk to her after we get off the air here, I want to get you back and really go into your backstory. Would you be willing to do that? Definitely. Because so often we look at these individuals that are out there, and we think, oh, why don't they get out and get a job? And yet they can't. They're, they're in, and I'm sure you've discovered this as well. I will tell you, Marcia, when you do that, there won't be dry eyes I know, in the room. Already. Caitlin is amazing. Um, she has gone through tough times mm -hmm. and um, has just worked so hard. And she's our head cashier now at, at Harvest Cost Share. Um, she's an inspiration to everybody. And that's um, what it takes, I think, just to give and the word hope. That's what it's all about. So we're going to be talking about that. And of course, maybe we can do a little bit now about, uh, you've got a question down here, who may be interested in the individual people who would be out there that are saying, oh, I don't have all those skills, or I don't know how to do this, or you know, my background is so horrible, I don't even know how to, I, I need food. What is the real profile of that person? The profile for Harvest itself is anybody in cr any kind of crisis situation. Mm -hmm. We are a crisis center. Um, we do referrals all over the community. We do. We have several educational programs. We have wonderful volunteer opportunities. Um, there's so much to the Harvest. Um, this particular facet of Harvest, um, anybody who's interested in improving their work readiness skills, uh -huh. anybody who's tried for months, maybe a year to get a job and they can't get one. We've had people who maybe dropped out of high school um, and need a GED. We assist with that. Oh, boy. Um, we've had engineers with a degree in engineering. Um, we've had people as young as 17 and we've had um, a a a r p. Uh -huh. uh, uh, that participants. means old people. That's like <laughs> me. I are, I are one. <laughs> uh, but and and that's what's so wonderful about it is the the range. It's it's anybody who's willing to try um, to improve their their readiness, their work readiness skills. Well, I think we need to get the word out so much more because when we see in the world that we're living in right now, is so difficult. And of course, I, when we come back, I want to talk to you really about some of the criteria though, because we have so many individuals who are so heartbroken but they are utilizing drugs. And we want to talk about that in just a moment too because we'll talk about the profile of exactly who can, everybody can really, I think, profit by this particular organization, The Hope. We'll tell you more about it when we come back. Stay with us. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Freddie Wolfrick and Gregory Simpson invite you to Spotlight Indian River weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30. Well, thanks for staying with us. As I mentioned so frequently, you're going to be so happy you did too because during our break, 
I have Caitlin committed to coming back and doing an entire show with me to talk about her experience. And I think what it'll do, and Patty, as you pointed out to me, it just gives so many people that are out there thinking it's over, it's done. It gives them a second chance. It absolutely does, Marcia. We do not close a door on anybody. Um, most of the people in our classes have barriers of some sort. It could be a high school dropout. It could be someone who's early in recovery with mm -hmm. addiction. It can be someone who's had several felonies. Um, we are a second chance organization. We don't turn anybody away. You know, it's so wonderful because now you talk about community partner involvement. Talk to me a little bit about that. We have wonderful community partners and we're reaching out and getting more people on board. We do on-the-job training as part of the program uh -huh. and we have several partners such as Habitat for Humanity, AARP, and we're working towards uh, the Sebastian Gym, um, you know, different organizations that can You're offer. You're going to lose her as a cashier. She's <laughs> going to want to go work out, right? Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, the, so there are many different industries that we're going to tap into the automotive industry because people come in with varying talents sure. and skills and hopes and we want to try to put them in, a, in an environment where they're going to, you know, be able to learn. And I guess in these last couple of minutes then, Patty and Caitlin, what I'd love to do is let our viewer understand what they can do, how they can help, and also the procedure of those of you out there who would like to be a part of this and join this really wonderful, hopeful effort. So what is the, the procedure? Anybody can come in to Harvest Outreach. We're at 2746 US Highway 1. Um, we have the thrift store in the front. We have mm -hmm. the cost share grocery store. And we have the Life Enrichment Center. Just come into the Life Enrichment Center. We'll give anybody a tour and you know find out about our organization we have several volunteer opportunities we love our volunteers dearly uh, we couldn't do what we do without them I bet. frankly sure. um, and you know there's a place for everybody there you know, I think this is so important as well as to realize that there is an opportunity there. I know Treasure and Space Coast Radio have been very supportive of this particular organization, and it seems to me that every time someone gets together and they talk about it, they'll say, oh, I had no idea. I had no idea. And that's what it's all about. So if in wrapping this up, how would someone out there that's watching right now, because it is on the Internet and all you have to do, any place in the world, you can see Buzz TV, how would they get in touch with you? Um, they can uh, call 772-564-9365 uh, or just come in to see us. We're at 2746 U.S. Highway 1 in Vero Beach. That's one of our four locations. We also have a location um, in Orlando, uh, Fort Pierce, and mm -hmm. uh, South Vero. All right, now, would you have guest speakers available? Would Caitlin be, be able to go and talk uh, to groups and you have different uh, to get the word out? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we also have many guest speakers that come in and present to our classes. Uh -huh. um, Officer mm. Mersenik is oh, one of sure. them from Sebastian Police Department. We have the Sheriff's Department. Um, so this is part of your class when you yes, have this. And wh what is the week, what is the length of time that uh, individuals are involved? It's eight weeks. Mm -hmm. It's 120 hours of um, classroom instruction during that eight weeks, and it's 180 hours of on-the-job training in, oh, in whatever um, you know particular skills that they want to sharpen. Well, as I promised, I'm going to have Caitlin come back and really give her experience because you can see it is a winner. So mm -hmm. we want to thank you so very much, Patty, and of course, Caitlin, for coming on talking to us about hope. There is indeed hope out there for everyone. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382.